the different energy the colors around us are putting out really do affect us they affect how we think they affect how we react they affect our mood in a given situation Welcome back to the podcast, Biz on the Brain, with your host, Anne-Marie, where we talk about how to show up more authentically and unapologetically as yourself in life and business, and really attract the right kind of people who love you for who you are, all of the expertise, all of the creativity, all of the skills that you bring to the table, and I call it the Hogwarts sorting hat for the business to just be yourself unashamedly just show up as yourself as you are on any day on any platform because that way you can preserve your energy and you don't have to people please bend over backwards or try to contort yourself into a business persona that you feel is suited for your clients or your business but that will eventually just not be sustainable and drain you and might also attract the wrong kind of people who might like their persona but not yourself. It doesn't feel self-fulfilling. And when you are an entrepreneur, chances are you started this because you had a passion, you wanted to create a life that you dreamed of, a lifestyle that is suited to your specific needs and tastes and wants, and not just, again, be forced into a cubicle, be mental or physical, just really be your own boss in your own life and business, right? So why would you force yourself through all of that? And one way that can show up in business, even in personal life, is through color. And it's not just about fashion, you know, how bold do you present yourself? And as you can see in my own business and for the branding of this podcast also, I wear a lot of bold, bright colors mostly in the yellow and pink tones at the moment which i absolutely love and during my childhood i was very much afraid of actually embracing them i had a lot of judgment around that too girly i didn't want to be pushed into that corner it felt very sexist to me that that would already give people some kind of preconceived notions as to what kind of person i am or as to how they thought i wanted to be treated it's You know, I had a lot of stories around that. So I was actually very much afraid of wearing anything with pink. And for a while, I tried to wear hot pink mini skirts to kind of reclaim that energy and try to see how it incorporated into my life and how it would cause reactions in other people. And I felt really, really uncomfortable. People were very much, I wouldn't say triggered, but it didn't feel right to wear it i felt very judged i felt very you know um looked at negatively with those clothing choice choices even though i absolutely loved those pieces that i selected and i still remember like almost feeling shame around it and not wanting to even look at it just do it in private you know but not on the street and so for a decade i never wore any pink at all and i just recently rediscovered that i absolutely love pink and then there's so many shades and tones for it um not a fan of hot pink but more like warm muted colors and i decided to just make that as my brand to really almost pre-select the people who would approach me because there's a lot of people who just really don't want the girly feminine approach and style and visuals that i provide and they will be put off and on purpose. And I absolutely love that because, you know, it's clear messaging. It's clear on who I want to work with and who I don't because there's always people who would fit with you. So you don't have to make other people fit the concept that you want. Instead, you just look for them the way they already present themselves. It's easier for them. It's easier for you. It's just good business, I think. And the way you position yourself with color and how you need to incorporate all of the colors of the rainbow to your day-to-day life, what it has an effect psychologically, oh my gosh, <laughs> and the effect it has psychologically on your psyche, on your confidence, when you actually mindfully choose colors and not negate certain colors or just completely embrace the beige monochrome color scheme. I'm talking with 
Montaz, who is a color expert. And without further ado, I want to introduce you to her because she lives life absolutely boldly, brightly, vividly as her most colorful self and the effect it has on people who see her be it in her collective, be it in her network or just random strangers on the street is absolutely fascinating. And I need you to listen to her now. So without further ado, let me introduce to you Momtaz. Hello, I love hello. Thank you so much for being here on this podcast. I love having you here because you are the queen of color, everything colorful and sparkly and fun. It is just such a refreshing thing to just see you seeing your existence and the spaces you inhabit and all of the beautiful color therapy you're putting out there to make people much more lively and you know see little things in this ah, i don't i just love that you're here so do you want to quickly introduce yourself what do you do and what lights you up Sure. So thank you so much for having me on here. Um, I'm Mumtaz and um, I say that my superpower is color. And I genuinely believe that my purpose is to share the kind of well-being benefits of color to make color accessible and to just show people how to sort of incorporate and to harness the power of color in their everyday life. Um, and so most of what I do is about color. But it's about positivity um, and you know, there's such a link between those two things. So I've just really found, I guess, my space um, in this, what sounds like a very niche specialism, but mm -hmm. it's something that's very much in me. And so that I can't really stop. It just comes out naturally. So I realized rather than just being an appreciator and a lover of color myself, that actually this is something that I can share with others. So I've been trying to find ways that I can share this sort of positive message to have more color in your life. I love that. And it's funny with special inherent gifts, we often feel like it's really no big deal to put it out there and we take it almost for granted. Mm -hmm. And it's those special gifts that actually help other people with this lack that you have so much abundance in other people don't really are not aren't really in tune with it like you see color you embrace color you uh, bring more color into other people's lives and especially with the current trend i don't know what you think about that the beige mom trend yeah it's it's awful and i think yesterday i read an article um which is something i've seen i've been noticing it a lot where especially on sort of tiktok and instagram there's a whole kind of um movement towards this um this existence which is kind of very flash and very expensive very designer um mm -hmm. but colors are very beige so it's about this real minimalism and yeah. you're showing you've got lots of money and that you've got your prada handbag and your Gucci this and your bulgari that um but it's all very yeah dark and minimal and and kind of personality uh there's no personality there yeah <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely um, we're in a we're in a world where we can't escape um, the sort of neutralism and people trying to tell us that neutralism is the kind of way. Um, and when you fight against that, you are seen as a bit different or a bit weird or a bit strange. Um, and yet, I think it's quite a Western concept because anytime I leave Europe, you know, whether it's Asia, whether it's Africa. Mm -hmm. Wherever I go, um, Central America, South Africa, these places are so colorful. Color is just there. Yes. <laughs> it's the norm, but somehow it's yeah, it's not the norm where we are. I love that. I, and then two things of that. I love that you brought this up because, you know, when I was growing up, there was this one movie and I keep forgetting the name, but basically the, it's just some rom-com, whatever. But this guy ended up in Mexico following some, his love interest. And then this house where she lived every single room had a different color and i was like that's my goal as an adult i want to have a house and every room would be a different color right so like that was and still to this day i'm i'm so confused by people who don't have any color on their walls so like why do you invest in the house and it's boring right and then the other thing i heard about a really interesting discourse where they stipulated that 
um, this minimalist trend towards just lack of color, just ripping everything away from it and making it kind of almost museum-like has some kind of colonizer undertones to it. You know, stripping away the culture, you're stripping away the personality and everything that's kind of maximalist. Like you say, if you go abroad, there's so many colors, there's so many patterns and a lot of enhanced cultural and historical significance. And then even in Europe, we have like a lot of different cultures mm-hmm. and the space trend feels very American still. I, and you know, it just it is an interesting trend because also yeah it's a rich people trend if you can have everything beige and white and you cannot afford spills oh yes you can because you can replace it right because i could never i could never exist everything would be such a mess <laughs> i cannot i cannot be so civilized and not ever have any crumbs or stains i am the worst adult in that way i can't you and can hide, I don't you can hide a lot. You can hide a lot of colors, believe me. You can hide stains and all sorts. Um, but you know, it's really interesting what you just mentioned about the kind of European culture because absolutely, sort of traditional and sort of folk cultures, they're incredible. Yeah. Um, last year I went to, um, uh, in fact this year as well, I've been to um, well, ethnographic museums. I love going to ethnographic mm-hmm. museums. I went to one in Spain this year, last year I went to one in Poland and Czech Republic and when you look back at the folk cultures, the costumes, the crafts, um, the way homes were decorated, you know, the folk painting, these are colourful. <laughs> yes. So the colour is in the history for sure. Um, and, it, you know, in terms of the sort of like the colonised comment, for sure, it's just kind of been taken away from us and it's kind of been, that happened a lot in countries that were colonised because it's kind of pushing out local culture and just bringing in clean slate. The forest plainness. Um, one of the things that I find just really difficult is, you know, because in the UK where I am, you know, there's this massive emphasis on owning property. It's like, um, so in the UK uh, where I am, there's this real emphasis that you've succeeded in life if you own your own property. And everything is about, you know, saving money to own somewhere. It's all people talk about. Um, and unfortunately, that comes with this idea that if you're going to buy and sell property, the property it's only going to sell. It's only going to be worth money if it's completely minimal. So therefore, you shouldn't do up your home because you'll lose value in your home. If your home looks like colourful like mine, probably no one's ever going to want to buy it. Therefore, you must keep it minimum. And it, it just boils back to sort of like this capitalist idea of kind of like money and the most money and keeping everything, you know, very kind of like just neutral and... I find it very disturbing and I find it, um, yeah, you know, I find it very difficult as well um, and just deeply sad that our own personalities, our own identities, we're being told that, you know, we can't express them because, you know, this, these are the reasons that it all just sort of boils down to this money idea. So it is a complicated thing. Um, and so I do find, you know, I have a lot of friends that are colourful. So sometimes I do forget. Because I'm all my friends are colorful, we're all colorful. And I might forget that actually there's a huge, like 99% of the population, they are scared of color. They have these oh, yeah. real fears about it. So actually there is a lot of work to do. To... And shame around it, I feel also. Like one of the biggest things I am so annoyed by, uh, most of the time I can just not notice it. I trained myself to ignore it. But sometimes it gets really hot. In Germany, we have almost like a uniform look, um, especially if you go to the cities. Uh, everybody wears jet wolf skin, jeans, ready to go on a hike at any moment, prepared for the rain to come or the sun to come, we ready, you know? And so you always have like monochromatic kind of ri- like winter style colors, uh, black and brown and blue. And that's very typical. Like each city has almost a kind of own look, but it's just recycle baseline coming back to being ready for anything that is practical it's not really fashionable i'm I'm very mad that we're not fashionable because when i go out and i love colors i always loved colors but growing up i always felt really awkward and self-conscious around it and now like the other day i was standing around my very bright yellow coats and a pink beret hat on top and a pink scarf and i was just standing at a corner talking to a friend and i kid you not every single person in the half hour that i was standing there would 
openly gawk at me. Like they sometimes would even stop and stare at me, look me up and down. There was even a dog that nearly like attacked me because the owner wouldn't stop staring and he just stood wow. there holding the dog back, but just not moving or trying to do anything to the dog. I was like, that's scary. Um, can you please move? And they would all be like almost offended by my existence. And I was like, what's going on? My friend was like, do you know these people? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. I'm here talking. I'm just existing. I'm not doing anything. And I have had that experience so many times in Germany. As soon as I wear a hat, like just a hat, people wow. forget. Or oh, like a colorful jacket. Like I have a pink leather jacket. I currently, as you can see, my theme is pink and yellow. I put it in the branding everywhere to scare off all of the people who don't like color. I need colorful people. So I will put it in your face. They will sort themselves out. Right. I love that. And it, it has put off so many people, especially in Germany. And it's just such a weird thing because it's not doing anything to you. Why do you care? But it somehow triggers people. And I still don't know how being against the grain is so inherently offensive. I don't know. If it's just like some insecurity, like that they kind of wish they would be more. I don't know. This idea of, you know, just difference and foreign and strange. And yes. when someone can't relate to anything, it's just that fear, you know. Yeah. It's, it's the other. Unfortunately, it's part of just the way human nature is. So we yes. have, to, have to, you know, we, both of us and, you know, other people who, who connect with this idea, we just have to keep at it going against the grain and showing people and, and, and doing what we need to do because it's the only way to make people realize um because what i find is a lot of people um they they tell me they don't you know they they they've got a fear of color but it is a fear and it is something that can be sort of vanished away <laughs> You know, there are ways to build up your kind of confidence. And I think the more people see it, the more they see people like us, the more people they, they realize that actually it's not bad, then the more they will start to experiment as well. So, but we are still a long way, way off from feeling um, that it is something that's accepted. But, you know, interestingly, over the years, you know, Instagram, I think, has helped the aesthetic world, you know, at the time of recording this, there's a whole Wes Anderson craze that's overtaken Instagram. <laughs> yes. I guess it's a trend, but I love it. Uh, I don't see people really embracing the color yet. Um, maybe it's just my feet. Uh, but I, I still love that people are now using trends to be more quirky and creative in whatever way. I think, yeah, like you said, it's important to just show up as yourself, A, to just actually feel like in line and in purpose and uh like just be fully you that's so important like whenever i try to tone myself down or to censor my colors or just really i don't know fit in it just took away some part of my soul and light it really just dimmed it and i'm like i'm not doing this for anybody anymore and i also find that it inspires people like like you said if you show up then it's like a permission slip that oh they can do it i can do it and also there are people out there who are like that so maybe i should actually look for those people and hang with those people if they're my type of people right i mean if you want to be with the the black dressed kids cool do that be with the golf kids so like it's fine you know we all can express ourselves and it doesn't take away anything from yourself if you just let other others be there's that thing, isn't there, of sort of being in, you know, the echo chamber. So we yes. the people that we follow. So I feel like it's really important that each of us does try and follow different aesthetics style as well. Because, yes. you know, if we are only interested in a certain type of person, we just soon forget that others exist. You know, my my Instagram is very active, my socials are active, but they are still like one percent of what I'm actually taking. Yeah, content wise, I'm just creating content like 24 seven, not for anyone to ever see, but just, um, you know, I've always, I've always pre social media, I'd always kept a written diary. So I'd always recorded my life. And for me, this is just this easier way now of, of keeping track of what I'm doing is just videoing. And yeah, I know that some people find that, um, disconcerting, for example, uh, I've got three sisters. They don't use social media. So at any gathering or any meetup with them, there's no con. They have no concept of taking photos mm. and videos at all. 
where yeah. be like <laughs> documenting like everything i know we live in a different sphere sometimes to like people who don't create mm-hmm. content because now everything i see is content and anything yeah. yes can be repurposed but sometimes it's just i have it because it's struck an inspiration in me or it's just something that i want to put in my journal or you know there's always something to hold on to it's like this kind of security blanket where you know you can still hold on to this memory this moment and if it's gone it's gone and we do have to like sort it out in your head somehow like my head is so busy i don't have the capacity for like more taps you know <laughs> so like having it i don't know helps me too <laughs> i think you know i think that we've adjusted to that lifestyle now but it is still a reminder again that echo chamber thing like because we are around people who like things to us and they also uh, you know do content creation things but then you know my absolute best friend in the world she's not on instagram and okay same is on instagram so actually there's yeah. a lot of people who are not do who are not they're completely oblivious to certain things um and, and you know i i i have pangs of sort of like jealousy for that mm-hmm. Man, what that's like <laughs> i had to explain to my best friend yesterday what a meme is i was like girl what <laughs> it's a different life <laughs> yeah it's a good reminder though it is a reminder that this is not this is not the only way clearly it wasn't the way things used to be it's the way it is now but it still isn't for everybody and you know i, I do quite like that that dynamic of there are still people who have zero interest in social media yeah um, and yeah i sort of sometimes i will get these nostalgic pangs to the life before and how i was spending my time but i'm fully aware things have moved on so we, we're in this yeah. space now and i see its benefits so you know, for me, I just try and try and keep it positive as much as possible. Exactly. But you also do a lot of offline stuff, right? With your color work and color therapy. Mm-hmm. So what, how do you feel like color can help in that way? Because, you know, you, you can paint online, you can paint in Photoshop, mm-hmm. whatever, but just having the tactic, like the physical experience of paint, like how does that factor in? Yeah. I mean, for me, I look at color uh, very much as a sensory experience. So I'm quite a sensory person. So in terms mm. of sort of like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about color in terms of sight, but it's also feeling, um, but senses in terms of like, you know, sound, touch, smell. So I'm very drawn to the senses. And for me, color is one of the ones that I really feel most drawn to. Um, I'm very very interested in sort of like sound therapy and aromatherapy as well these are all vibrational therapies Mm -hmm. and in that sense you know they actually are affecting us in ways that you know all around us these things are happening every single thing of color in our rooms that are surrounding us now is giving off a particular energy and for me um there's such a a focus now on you know mental health and how we feel um and wait things that we can do for ourselves to make us feel better and for me, because I'm a trained color therapist as well, like I've really kind of learned that actually the different energies, the colors around us are putting out really do affect us. They affect how we think, they affect how we react, they affect our mood in any given situation. You know, we're surrounded in a space that's very red, for example, and, you know, we're feeling anxious. It's probably going to amplify those feelings of sort of anxiety and, um, feeling just kind of like a high alert because actually mm-hmm. renting us off those energies and actually if we were to be more aware of the colors around us and how they're affecting us we would actually change up the way we come across each day you know mm-hmm. the colors that we expose ourselves to before we're going to like an important meeting could actually have an effect on how that meeting goes for example blue is the color of communication so if we need to really get a point across you know maybe we're going to a court hearing for example or a job interview or another situation that means we need to actually come across very succinct very clear and communicative then if we have some blue around us or if we're in a blue environment or we've kind of spent some time in blue beforehand then those energies those communicative energies of blue can actually put us in a good frame of mind and for me actually what I love about this whole concept is that color 
is free. Like it's literally yes. around us. If I want to get a dose of blue energy before an important meeting, I can just go outside of the street and look at the sky for a few minutes and just sort of meditate and get all the blue energy from that. I don't need to go and buy anything. Mm -hmm. and so before where I talked about, you know, we're sort of getting rid of color in the home because we want to this this whole emphasis on sort of like money and capitalism and we've got to sell we've got to make money and everything's got to be like bland this kind of goes against that because color is everywhere it doesn't involve money the most amazing colors are actually in nature you know we're not doing anything for that we're just seeing that the sun is rising the sun is setting the flowers are growing the green grass is everywhere these natural colors will all impact us as well so what i try and do is actually show people how they can harness all these different ways of color in their life. So I do this through um, workshops that I run. Um, I tend to frame them in terms of sort of arts and crafts therapy. because I think that's a really nice accessible way of sort of like experiencing color, um, but also like talks and workshops as well. Um, just different ways to make it accessible for people. So I like to write about color a lot as well. Um, because then if you're sort of reading something about color, then you're interacting with color in a different way. And I've also got a podcast about color as well. So again, for me, it was like color is such a visual thing. How could it be an audio podcast? And actually that's tested me to talk about color, but to get people excited about color through listening to it, not mm. through seeing it. So just trying to find ways to make color accessible to people, to make it relevant um, and yeah, to, to show people that it's not just about the aesthetics of fashion or interiors. Now, these are the two things people most associate colour with. They think of something colourful, like yes. on oh, mean dressing colourfully, but not at all. This is mentioned like spending time in nature. You will get all the benefits of colour therapy by going on your daily walk, but paying more attention to colour. Um, the foods that we eat, again, we should be considering the colours of what we're eating. Um, there's there's a lot of interesting elements within color therapy that explains to us about the foods we eat and again the different energies we're giving throughout the day so an example would be um red being the most energizing of colors so if in the morning you have some red it's a really great way to kind of perk up your day so that could be having you know sliced strawberries in your breakfast cereal is a great way to start the day whereas if you decide to go for big bowl of strawberries before bed it might not help you sleep so well because you've just taken all this energizing red energy so your body's not really going to rest up as much whereas blueberries or like blackberries which belong into this sort of dark purple this blue family they're much better to have before bed because you're actually getting those calming cooling properties or relaxing properties of those colors so I have a question what if you had a mm, red strawberries before bed but you ate it in the dark well you'd still be having the red energy at the end of the okay. day so i would i would, I would avoid that <laughs> i was the new braids or the black grapes or something okay. so in some ways um you know i want colors to be intuitive um i you know when i tell people i work in color the first thing they assume is that i tell people what kind of suit them and there's been a massive revival i think partially due to TikTok at the minute, there's a lot of content at the minute uh, of people saying, oh, these are your colors. So it's like yes. color matching. Skin tone. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I don't prescribe to that because mm -hmm. I don't believe in there being such a kind of um, specific of oh, this color suits you. I believe it's much more to the intuition and what you are led to liking and what you know you what you enjoy what gives you the greatest pleasures what colors make you happiest that you should be surrounding yourself in but that aside the other bits that i just mentioned about the way colors react and respond therefore reds are better in the morning blues are better in the evening there is a lot of this sort of knowledge that can be learned and taught because these aren't things that most people would be thinking about or they'd be experiencing so i find it quite an exciting thing that we can actually enjoy color on a very personal level but also there's a lot to learn about color as well 
Exactly. Yeah. And it's so prescriptive too in fashion, you know, there's the trends, like you shouldn't wear this combination or you now you should wear this combination. But then there's also, like you said, and I wanted to bring that actually up. So it's good you did, uh, with the color tones, like what your season is. Like for instance, when I was in uni, I attended one of those seminars where they tell you what your type is, like anything you shouldn't wear other than that. Yeah. And I completely, uh, uh accept that i was like that's this is my gospel now i'm gonna only wear autumn colors i cannot wear any other things and i I was very rigid with that and it kind of also like it helped me feel more confident but it also limited myself in a way yes i can like i was easily skipping other things that i knew really wouldn't suit me and i always tried to talk myself into like wearing white when i knew i look like a ghost because i'm definitely super white i'm very very pale so anything with black and white i do look even more ghostly which works well with like doctor's appointments you know but other than that i shouldn't and but it also helped me embrace more reds and, and like turquoise colors and all of that and that was really cool but then at some point i was like you know why ditch that if i feel like i want to wear an orange that is a little bit more on the cooler side or whatever i will if i like the shirt i will and then maybe i change my taste and next year i will Mm -hmm. it's fine you know if you if you use it in a way that fuels you and fills up your need for certain colors for Mm -hmm. that sort of expression because i used to be all about orange now i'm all about pink and yellow Mm -hmm. and it might just be psychological thing like where you are in life what you need or what you vibrate at but on that, because we did a, because I did one of your workshops, and then you mentioned something, and I want to bring that up, that you look, need to look at your wardrobe and see if there's a color missing, and do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, way I, the way I look at color is actually about having a balance, so hmm. a balance across all the colors, and it's kind of like getting your five a day or ten a day fruit and vegetables. You know, you need to get a bit of all the different nutrients and vitamins and minerals in your diet to keep the balance. It's a very much the same with colors. So if every color is sort of pulsating its own energy and its own vibration. So funny enough, I think I've got pretty much all the colors mm-hmm. on my nails right now. I love it. <laughs> so the thing is that if you were to exclude any color from your wardrobe or from your life, just like if you were to exclude any vitamin from your diet, you are immediately missing out on the properties of that color. So you're going to miss out on the balance. So for example, if at the moment you haven't got any green in your wardrobe, we'll stick to wardrobes for now because it's such an easy thing to kind of imagine. If you don't have any green in your wardrobe, you are missing out on green being the most balancing, the most harmonizing of colors. This is the color that can really bring us so much you know, grounding down to earth feelings. It's placed in the center of the rainbow. It really is like the central color. And we will start to lose this kind of sense of actual natural balance if we don't have green in our life. So if you're feeling quite anxious and you're kind of off kilter all the time, perhaps it's because you haven't got enough green in your life to kind of keep that sort of like calmness going. And it'd be similar with other colors as well. So if you think of like pink, if you decide to exclude pink from your wardrobe, Mm -hmm. now pink is an incredibly um, loving and warm and nurturing color. So you're going to miss out on having some of that nurturing and relaxing energy because pear pink actually calms us down. If we're angry and stressed, pink can actually sort of like lower um, the anger levels. So having some balance of pink will actually calm those nerves as well. So it's really worth just seeing, you know, which colors do I not have in my life? And perhaps I should start to have a bit of that color. It doesn't need to be the wardrobe. It could be, okay, I'm going to get myself a pink cushion. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to live on the sofa in the living room. I'm only going to see it a couple of times a day when I sit down to watch TV. But I'm still going to get a little pink, a little dose of pink energy. Or, you know, if I don't have enough yellow in my life, because I don't like yellow, it's kind of a color. And I actually didn't used to like yellow. I used to hate yellow. It's my least favorite color. Oh, I've got a yellow, I've got a yellow sofa. Though. Yeah. It's, but, you know, you said something really spot on. Um, which was about this needing different colors. You used to love, you know, um, a particular color and now, you know, you've moved on to other colors. But this is very much the natural course of nature because at different times of our life, we need different properties, different energies of different colors at different times. So 
if you're going through a massive change in your life, if you're moving house, if you've had a child or you've had a breakup, the things that you need to nourish you are very different as if, if you were just going about and everything's kind of like, la di da fine. Mm-hmm. you're actually calling out the different energies and those energies will come and find you. So you start to get attracted to certain colors at different times, whatever's going on. So it could be that blue has never been your favorite color, but all of a sudden you start to be drawn to blue. Mm. And that's because actually you need some blue in your life, but actually just the way the kind of universe responds to you kind of, makes you feel like attracted to blue and that's something to be really kind of alert you know did you use our favorite color but you're finding it is changing and again you can start to think about oh actually i, I suddenly i'm really like red all of a sudden and then you can start to ask wonder why that is now what's happening in my life what's changed you know have i just fallen in love you know what is it what's just what's just made me suddenly get attracted to the color and you really do learn a lot about yourself when you start to see um, the colors that you're attracted to and the colors that you are cutting yourself off from as well, because both of those things are very revealing. That's a great tool for getting more in touch with your intuition and being more mindful. I really love that. That's any, yeah, for sure. Color has always been super important to me and like for self-expression, like I said, and then the more I travel, for instance, the more I feel the super need to just, I need a beautiful Airbnb, like right now. I need to look at prettiness. Like I always say, I to work properly for myself, I need pretty. I yeah. need my space to be aesthetically pleasing and to be some sort of balance. Like I cannot just function in this big, maximalist, super beautiful, Pinterest-y places. I love them, but I, it's too much. And then just boring hotel rooms, too little. And I've been always very sensitive to it. And like you said, the color is a sort of sensitivity. And last year I found out that I have ADHD, which you know I've always had. It's just a new diagnosis. And looking at it, one of my favorite stems to like stimulate my creativity, get dopamine, is visual, is colors. Like, you know, some people put rainbow stickers on their windows to get like a fraction of rainbows everywhere. And that just pleases them so much for the dopamine, right? And I, the first thing that I did when I moved in into this space two years ago was paint the walls. I had no actual concept. I did a little bit in Photoshop, like some designing and all of the furniture I put into Photoshop to like exactly match the colors. And then I slept on the floor on a mattress and I was like, I need to move in after all of the colors are on the walls and then everything falls into place from there. And it was really interesting. And like you mentioned earlier with the capitalism sort of beige trend, my dad walked in when I was ready and I was like, yes, I'm super proud. Look at it, dad. And he's like, oh, this is going to be so hard when you're going to move out and you have to paint it over. And I'm like, dad, can you just not rain on my parade? This is amazing. He's just like, but yeah. about the white paint. I'm like, I'm not thinking about the white paint. This is why I painted it in the first place. Dad, <laughs> you know. I know. The thing is that like, it's paint. It's literally, it can be painted over. So it I feel like we be excited or no, we can't change. But of course we can change. Like, always. Oh, Interior decor has never been easier. I mean, back in the day, you were basically like pasting on wallpaper was really, really tricky. And now you've just got these like repositionable wallpaper that you just stick on and you can lift off. There's new marks left on the wall. It's just become so much more easier for us to explore how we do our space. And, you know, the fact is that, you, like, and I'm similar as well. I, I can't be the best version of myself. I can't be me unless these things are right that my environment is right, that I'm dressed right, that my makeup's right, because these are things that just make me feel like I'm performing, I'm, a, I'm, I'm at my best, like I feel really good. And when those things are taken away from me, I, I just don't feel as good. And why can't we feel that way if we want to? If it takes these things, that's fine. I don't, I don't think that's an issue. I think it's like, actually, these are the tools. Tools can come in so many different ways. And if our tool is to make our space look good and therefore, <laughs> how we can be our best then fantastic you know the fact we've actually identified that you know that that is amazing um and we all need to spend a bit of time on that actually thinking of what are the things that will make me be my best do my best work the best space the best environment the environment that we work in whether it's a home environment or you know an office environment or you know wherever you spend a lot of your sort of working hours it's it's so conducive to the type of work that you do you know i generally like um my space is very lived in but gets 
messy very very quickly but I'm fully aware that like I don't work as well in the mess no one's saying I don't feel like tidying up I literally will have to go and work in a cafe because it's the only way I can <laughs> step away from it until I've got time to tidy up again but I know that I will be my best when the space you know is, is right yeah and you have to know yourself or like allow yourself to experiment and explore without having this kind of chokehold of other people's opinions what would they think about your space and it's really interesting so far every single person that came in except my dad yeah. when they came into my space were like oh my god this looks like lived in this looks amazing everybody's just like flawed and i'm super proud because like, i did all of the painting and the murals myself and like everything like i said is color matched everything is the same three like four different colors <laughs> hex codes and everything and so many people just don't even think in that way so i think if you have this kind of like i don't know gift or talent for seeing the colors and for like turning it into some kind of vision manifested i think this is really powerful and inspires other people like that i didn't even like i did not want to show it off to other people that was not my goal at all but it is it's just someone just seeing it on somebody else you know we're talking about words and things it's not about people and like you know it's not about numbers and things it's literally like if, if if one person like a friend or a neighbor or someone in your you know immediate community if you can actually just help someone feel confident in something like yeah. you know, influence them and the amount of people that probably come into your home and they have just gone home and just maybe just added a tiny bit more of color but it's just a small thing but you know, we do need, like, I feel like this sort of the influence of other people is, is so powerful. Yeah. It's like, because it, it just gives us the confidence that we don't, we don't find it in ourselves, most people. So we do have to look for other people. And therefore, if we can keep showing people, look, color is possible for you. Because mm -hmm. they're just being fed the, op the opposite story from so many times, of course. <laughs> so we have to work a bit harder. But honestly, like, the amount of people who I've seen like color has just made their life so much better. And you mentioned um, your ADHD diagnosis. So I've spoken with a lot of interviewed a lot of people who've got various um, different sort of health conditions, and I've interviewed a very recent like three people who've all got a, a form of depression in some way, and every single one of those people have all said to me that they have found their own personal relief in colour. Mm. Their doctors and their medics will never, ever, ever prescribe colour therapy. They won't yeah. say, why don't you spend some time in colour? Because it's just not recognised on a medical level. And yet, as individuals, we can feel. And I know that all of them said to me, they told me their stories that we found colour has helped us. You know, it's helped mm -hmm. us lift i'm not talking about lifting gray clouds if you've got depression because you know it's a medical condition it doesn't just lift because you've seen a rainbow but it can really just lift your spirits and just give you a bit of focus it can just change up the way you're thinking about things and that is how powerful color is just simply by just being this beautiful aesthetic you know it's so so powerful and we're just not as a society in general we are not understanding how powerful color is, what it can actually do for us. And I really would just like to see that change. I wish, yeah. you know, I wish doctors and things did start to, to say, actually, yeah. you know, I'm going to prescribe you. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot more work being done around like social activities and things are being prescribed like workshops or being prescribed going into nature. But, you know, if we could do more about sort of like art therapy and color therapy and, hey, here's a pot of paint, do some painting, see how that feels, then I think we would actually really see a lot more just um, sort of happiness kind of seeping in around us and a new ways out of sort of like being stuck in a situation, but kind of helping us sort of navigate ourselves out of, you know, being stuck in, in various ways. And I, yeah, I genuinely really, really like believe in that. Um, and that's why, you know, my, my book, which I've got, which I wrote a book, is called Hello Colour. It's called Hello Colour, um, Hello Rainbow. Uh, my podcast called Hello Colour, so I've just got, like, hellos on the brain. And the reason it's 
hello. I talk a lot about hellos because I want people to welcome colour in. It's actually to stop and recognise colour and say, oh, hello, colour, like I, I love and I want you, you know, I, I recognise you. So mm-hmm. podcast called Hello Colour. The book is called Hello Rainbow, Finding Happiness in Colour. So I've literally given it the subtitle of Finding Happiness in Colour because I genuinely believe that we can all find some joy, some daily bits of uplifting less, you know, some mood boosting power through colour. And I, you know, I, I feel like if all of us, every single one of us, like in the planet, spent a bit of time understanding how colour makes us feel, we would all be just, yeah, genuinely slightly happier. Um, and that's, you know, that's something I just want to keep sharing with people and keep showing them actually, once you've experienced it, once you have had a bit of colour in your life, you, you understand. It's been mm-hmm. a society sometimes. I feel like those who are in the, who those who have colour in their lives, like we're in the know. Like we just yeah. have a slightly more <laughs> like understanding of like, oh yeah, you know, life is great because actually like we're, you know, enjoying the colours of life all around us. Whereas if you cut yourself off from it, yeah, you're missing up. Exactly. And I think it also may tie into the inner child. You know, if you do a lot of self-work and if you're mindful, you know, you can calm yourself down. You can soothe yourself by like looking at the colors, like instead of just deep breathing, like different kind of thing. But also if you allow yourself to just express your color, choose a random color, just use hand paint, just like to express something that's inside without any kind of uh, construction like constriction or anything that you know needs to be perfect like just just put it out there make it messy and you don't have to be artsy you don't have to be talented just put it out there without any limitations it can't feel free it can tap into your creativity and all kids love color they might have a color that they are <laughs> crazy about but they will still still ask for all of the crayons and they will always use all of the crayons <laughs> and so when do we stop like why do we stop as an adult you know you can like you said you can just yeah, yeah. put it in a single frame in a little vase in a little candle whatever you can put ca- colors everywhere even if your house is completely like interior designed and like stylish and you don't want to mess it up but I find the most interesting interior designs are where it's just really disruptive. Like just this one little pillow that is suddenly pink or yellow in this really dark blue room with the dark green like cushions, whatever. But like there's a speck color, which feels cheeky almost. But you're like, you know, I intentionally break the rules. How? You know what's amazing about color is that, you know, one color on its own is great. But it's when you put colors together, like this actually, this relationship between colors that is when a color comes into its own, when it's paired against something else. And when you start to realize that, as you say, mm-hmm. like it's just the simplest thing, the smallest item in a room, the smallest bit of jewelry in an outfit that's one color, that's the thing that actually makes the, the rest of the color come out because it's just a little like connection between the two. So um, again, it's just one of the little learnings that we, we start to get when we start to explore color. We start to get understandings about oh actually these two look really good together and it's not just the cl- classic color wheel that says to you oh yeah this color complements that color put those two together it's not just about that it goes far beyond that it's, it's much more about us playing and exploring and thinking actually you know red and orange people might not say they should be next to each other but i don't like it on my side but it looks good yeah and exactly can you, can you understand that when you do spend a bit of time exploring color playing with it um but yeah i mean what you said is just about the children that have fear of color is again it's just one of the many things there are many things that as kids it's totally fine and then all of a sudden it's like it's gone and yeah many things vanish and color is one of the things that vanishes sadly yeah and i don't know i feel like the world could be so much more fun if there was just more color just, just on a basic, and I kind of feel like we know that, and it's always baffled me. Like when you go to offices and they are stripped down of personality and they're white or, you know, have the same furnishings, and then you know there's this debate about the lighting. You know, if you use just blue lighting and all of your fluorescent lights, it has a mental health effect in a negative way, and so they still don't replace those towards more orange light, and they still. They have all of this research on like plants helping you feel much more calm 
and, and different walls help you feel calm, like different common rooms, different rooms for ideation or meetings, whatever. We all know this. There's called the psychology and still companies are not taking that effort, even though it would increase productivity. Like you don't know why it's so hard to allow people personality in business, especially. And the funny thing is, it's different in retail because in retail, every single retail space, uh, it's designed to obviously make people spend money. Yeah. And a lot of that, you know, it's to do with the lighting. It's the way they light up oh, yeah. the products. It's the way, you know, it's, it's a really common thing that you can, for example, see a pair of jeans in a shop. You absolutely love the color. It's, it's, it's just the right amount of like dark mm -hmm. and a few because the lights. You take it out on the street, it's a completely different color. <laughs> but it's yes. because they know how to make the colors look really appealing and you know, this is what we want. Um, and for some reason, and again, I, I'd say the same thing kind of happens in the food and restaurant industry. Like, oh yeah, the plate, and you'd want, you know, you want this food. It looks so appetizing, and the color plays a big role in that. But yeah, for some reason, like, comes to offices and sort of like a window again. It's just like no, as you say, the productivity would be higher if we had space that were conducive. If color psychologists came in and worked with interior designers and actually created the spaces that would give us the most productive work levels but instead now nah, we'll just keep all the same exactly and, and when you said retail the same with like the fresh products you know the way it's misted and the way the light falls on it but also the classic example is like mcdonald's you know when they rebranded towards like mccafe suddenly everything was just brown and much more cozy and literally they used more cozy cushions and seating areas on purpose to make people actually stay and pay more as opposed to getting them kicked off because they feel kind of uncomfortable by the loud color scheme. That was so intentional. That was in all of the magazines, like, and still companies don't get it. Like, they, do you want people to stay and work over time, but make it feel so hard and uninviting? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't either, especially when, you know, like, for me, it's very much to do with the kind of co-working spaces that I'm trying to find, like the kind of cafes and wow. I'm kind of looking, kind of whip up my laptop and work for a little bit. And um, yeah, I mean, there's the more people we have in a space, the more welcoming it is, the more, you know, that person's going to spend on buying things and, you know, they're bound to come back with friends. Um, but yeah, there are places where it's just sort of like, yeah, they really don't want you here. <laughs> you know, they'll they'll do these sort of like things on the sly, which is to do with design details, it's to do with how they've kind of arranged things. They don't want you to stay long. Um, and yeah, no, it is sad, but it's so clever. You know, it's just a super, super clever house. All of these things are at play all the time. Um, I do see a lot more public art, which I think is great. A lot more people are investing in making like colorful, sculptures or tunnels or murals and mm. making color a bit more accessible in that way um i'd love to see more of that happening um i do think that color has historically you know it's seen as a kid's thing even someone at our website the other day and said to me last week actually um well they looked at my website and you know potentially this is true why well, you know i don't want to go into it too much but she was like oh well is this a website for kids or is it for adults <laughs> because it's colorful you know, and it's not really, like necessarily thinking if it's colorful, it's going to be for adults. And my site's for adults, it's not for kids, clearly. But mm. now I'm going to have to do a bit of rejigging on that because I need it to be more clearer. And that's something I'm working on anyway. I've got to make my kind of offerings more understandable and clearer. But it was just that reminder of like, why is color seen as this kiddie thing? Like, why is it children's playground that will be colorful? But why can't it be like a you know, an adult space that has some lovely color in it as well. Uh, and there's just no reason for it. You know, the one, one of the things that's always really kind of wound me up and it, it's only slightly related, but it's just the, the sort of formal nature of someone being taken seriously. The more you have professional. Yeah. You're not going to be, um, if you've got colored hair, you can never mm -hmm. be seen as, you know, you'll never be a news reader. You'll never be a politician. You know, because all of a sudden, because of the color of your hair, it's just, it's obviously you're not serious. You don't know your stuff. You're not an expert. Um, and again, that's just one of the ways we've got so much work to do. It's completely irrelevant. Like it has, no, it has nothing to do with a person's ability, how they um, express themselves on the outside. 
And yeah, it's deeply disturbing that we're still in these times where it's acceptable to be one way or not. I mean, I've done a lot of temping jobs in uh, corporate spaces, sort of in between, you know, my own personal work. And I'll go into those spaces and I'll always just push it as much as I can with the colour. And the reaction is always people actually really like it. You know, they, they feel actually this is, you know, we don't mind it, but it's just the kind of culture around it and the culture from above that kind of stops these people being able to do it themselves. Um, and most of the time, there's just no reason for it. There's so many examples of where something doesn't need to be a certain way, but it is just because of history. <laughs> Just because. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. I've had all of the different, like, I've had most of the hair colors out there, like, except for blue. Yeah. I've had so many different hair colors in my mm -hmm. life, and I'm still the same person. But it's so wild how people treat you literally differently, depending on hair colors, or like, people have tattoos, like, it's just color on your skin. But instantly, people yeah. will judge you on it. They will infer something from it without even talking to you. And there's a lot of, you know all of these stupid rules and stigmas and like like you said like as soon as you are in a corporate environment suddenly you have to be presentable which is just be the blandest possible version <laughs> and it's um, absolutely yeah. wild and then you're surprised that people are struggling and having identity crises and midlife crises and they don't feel like themselves they don't know what they're like anymore because we're not taught to self-express, we're taught to uh, hold it down and maybe keep it in, but like keep it to your home, but then only to like maybe one accent wall or something. You know, even at home, we still feel that that weight of too much, too much color and it's wild. And then there's like crazy cool people like Iris Apfel and she's getting featured everywhere in her amazing walls and maximalist style and big carpets and like crazy lamps and like all kinds of, forms and that is just seen as a, this eccentric outlier but we're not actually taught to you know you can actually do that other than just capitalists like yeah. buy this high-end bars but no just do more do it whatever you feel like not what's I mean she's a great example and I'm so pleased to see people like that being used in big campaigns and you know normalizing that those people do exist um it was interesting because i did have an experience in the creative industry which wasn't so great because for a while um i was trying to get into drama school and um i went for like a, a, a week-long audition process and i remember the head of the drama school just said to me you are never going to get into this drama school unless you dye your hair black so i might have been there at the time because his his whole thing was like um you can't wear wigs like um You've got to be just, you've just got to be a neutral, a neutral thing. And your casting director, they will change your hair if they want to. They will oh, become a different character, but you yourself have to be neutral. You can't come in. And I'm just thinking, well, I'm sure I could just wear a black wig if I needed to. But he, he just, he just, and this is the head of the entire school. He was just like, that was such a no no. It was a real shock to me because I was like, I'm pretty sure most actors in their roles are not with their real hair. Yeah. I've been on a change, but it really surprised me because of what I'd always seen it as a corporate thing. And I didn't realize that there are creative industries where actually personality and personal self-expression can be frowned upon. And I soon learned that that is a thing in acting. So anyway, I didn't mm -hmm. go down that route. Um, well, it was a bit of a, shock, a bit of a shock for me to to find that out. I heard about that too. And same in modeling, you want to be a canvas for other people to work on. And then depending on how important you are, they might get you a wig. And depending on how, you know, if you break into money, um, you might get a good wig or a terrible wig. So like, that's how they decide. And then they can do whatever you want. You know, they can put you on like the big top model shows and then they can like wreak havoc to your mm -hmm. hair for views. But like even there, we can see how much is tied to your personality. You know how much people like change their hair or dye their hair when they have like a breakup or want to do something new. But at the same time, if just someone does it to you without you actually feeling it or wanting it, it can really be soul crushing. No, yeah. and you know I think that's one of the you know sort of good thing I guess to kind of like you know wrap on. It's just the. So really being aware of the the, pers the the personal connection of people that they have with color and 
and to be really yeah be very conscious of that to people's choices are they are very personal you know so I think you know although I'm quick to sort of say I wish people more colorful they, they are ingrained emotional reasons why people may not be so colorful they'd like mm-hmm. to be various experiences but similarly if you meet someone colorful always be aware that they um you know they are a normal person and they've still got feelings and you know something that you might say might actually offend them so yeah. you know being quite aware of actually insensitive towards people's choices um around the colors they use but you know it's the best starting point for a conversation it really is like yeah the amount of times that I've been able to strike up conversations with people who I would never speak to, no way I'll speak to certain people I've met because the colour conversation has connected us. So it's a real amazing way to open up and meet people. Um, and it's interesting because just right now I'm actually working on um, uh, a new collection of artworks that I'm creating. Um, and it's actually the, the entire all the sort of collection of pieces I'm doing. Um, it's basically, uh, it's called Collecting Compliments. Mm, the of that. And compliments me. I write it down. So I've got it written down. Loads of different things people have said to me. Um, and today someone in the street said to me, oh, um, like, you know, I love your colours. It's like, um, you know, it's like a real like feast for the eyes. Like it was just like, it was such a, it was such a natural reaction from this person. Just like, oh, you know, the, the eyes, it's just, yeah. and I was like, so I wrote that one down. So that was a really nice thing. Um, but yeah, these, these things it brings out in people, like the, they probably would have said anything to me in the street if I wasn't wearing the colors, but they felt compelled to be like, wow, like, you know, you've really woken up my eyes. Um, so yeah, it's a gift. I feel like color is a gift when, when we're colorful people, we, we are gifting it to people as well. So yeah. that's a really nice way. I think if you're afraid of wearing color, then potentially approach it from actually, like, it's not just me. I'm actually going to make someone else's day as well. You know, I love that. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> love that. You know, like there's this, uh, I don't know, I'm such a 90s kid, but like one of the mo- like one of the lyrics that stuck with me the most, even as an adult, was the, the line from Hilary Duff's Why Not from the Lizzie McGuire movie. Yeah. <laughs> and she's saying like in the chorus, like you always dress in yellow when you want to dress in gold. And I'm like, instead of listening too hard, you do it just what you're told. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so it. Because so many times I was like, I can't just wear pink. I should just wear red. And then I had that song in my head, like, no, I'm going to wear pink today. You know, it is empowering too. And then it helps people. And like you said, people give you compliments. And I often compliment people on their color. I'm like, I love the color of your hair or your coat or your nails. Or, you know, strike a conversation or just drop a compliment. And just because you can. And I never got as many compliments from random strangers as I did in Australia when I had (laughs) a purple hair. I hated it. It was an accident. But so many grandmas, especially, they stopped me on the street and they were like, (laughs) I just have to tell you, you look gorgeous. And I'm like, thank you. So that made my day. (laughs) And it made their day for some reason. So yeah, definitely. Be all the colors as you are. Another line from Ellie and AJ. <laughs> That's another thing that like stuck with me from my teenage years. I love that. Like be every color that you are. Like yes, <laughs> please. That's, you know, there's so much out there to enjoy, and all of us like different things, which is so yeah, yeah, exactly. Do whatever you feel like doing, and let other people do that too. Wonderful. It's a great wrap up. Anything we haven't covered that you want to leave the viewers with for the listeners with? Yeah, no, I mean, I would say if you want to get a daily dose of colour, then my Instagram is very colourful. So yes. uh, check that out at mom turns BH. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not, contri- it's not contrived content. It's not like, oh, I'm putting, curating this colourful content. It's literally just everything on there. It's just my daily life. Like these are things that are going on. These things that I'm doing, places I'm going. I always go to colourful exhibitions. I always like, you know, hang out with colourful people, wear colourful stuff. It's just, this is my life. So, but it, it, it's all colourful. So, yeah, it's quite a good way to just get a bit of um, inspiration about what is what can colourful look like. I love it. A day in the life of a colour chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Let's spreading try. the joy and colour. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's saying so about it, I always love the way, you know, you're open. Your opening, your sort of your aesthetic is so so great, you know, really strong. And um, thank you, you know, know what we're watching and seeing, and it's really great. So, yeah, I just hope that, 
yeah, anyone who's watched this or listened to this, you know, just, yeah, just next thing you do, you just think about, you know, how could I add more colour? And uh, yeah, you know, job, the job well done from both of us to say. <laughs> yeah, and then just like observe, just like notice in day to day life when you walk around, you're like, or like also one one thing maybe I want to leave because mm-hmm. to practice intuition, which is like one core cool aspect of this podcast, which we also yeah. touched upon. Sometimes I'm just like, okay, today I want to follow the color red. So I'm just following a red truck and then I see a red house and then I see a red a oh, yeah. bag. And then I just, you know, exercising mindfulness that way through just drifting through space mindfully of a color. So like that is a cool exercise I can leave people with. For sure. Color attracts color. So the more you start looking for a color, you, you yeah. do find it. It's amazing. What's the one? It's right on your colorful adventures. Thank and you. And you too. <laughs> All right then. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening in on this podcast episode of Biz on the Brain, where we just talk about all things color because life should be more colorful, should be more playful. And I don't know what happened to us as an adult. As soon as we crossed a certain threshold, we were suddenly upgraded to a life of no fun and play and color. Why is that? What's that about? And why can't we use color and still be professional? Why can't we use color for fun? Palestine's just using paint, using crayons, using colorful pencils for fun, self-expression, or just to doodle, to express ourselves, express our colors, or just have a nice little exercise to refresh your mind, reset the day in a way. And it's just playful. It's fun. Your inner child will love it. And if you have any opinion on that, please let me and Mom Taz know on social media. I drop all of the links down below in the show notes so you can follow us there. You can connect with us there. You can send us a little feedback and comments on all of this. And we'd love to have a chat with you. So do that. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast because we are having much more in-depth discussions on life and business in general and intuition and how it shows up in so many various ways in specifically so until the next episode i wish you a fabulous week bye bye